Hey everybody and welcome back to another quick tie with Tim. Uh, I'm Tim from Fly Fishing Board Real Fitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. We want to thank Rocky Mountain Fly Shop for sponsoring this quick tie for you. We are going to momentarily be going through this bad boy here. Great classic, fat Albert, foam, lots of fun to tie. Um, I'm going to be tying out of my Season 5 kit. This is the guy here. If you don't already have one, you can go over to our website and grab yourself one at www.flyfishingboardboard.com backslash tnls5. This is going to be coming out of episode 10 from season 5. That'll be what your kit looks like if you're tying out of it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. If you're watching along, hit that little bell as well because it'll let you know every time we have another video come out. If you are part of the Quick Tie Squad, meaning you're watching this right now, don't forget to drop a comment. We want to know you're here. We also want to say hello and welcome to anyone from Fly Fusion who has this fly in their kit and is getting to watch this video. We're happy to have you here. Don't forget to leave a comment so that we know you were. All right, guys, why don't we head on over to the vise and let's get going on this guy here. You can see this Fat Albert pattern um, in the vise right here. Great little hopper kind of crossover pattern. Could, could even look like a stonefly depending on the colors you tie it in. Uh, this is a very classic color today. We're kind of going with the, the peachy tan and brown with a black underbody. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the vise. I will get our hook placed in here. We're tying this on a size 8 terrestrial hook. There we go, nice and level. Um, I'm using some UTC 140 in this kind of bronzy brown. Um, important that we use something a little bit heavier as we're working with that foam. We don't want to um, we don't want to cut through that foam. So I'm going to start my thread about a quarter of the way back down the hook. I'm going to work this back all the way to the hook bend. I can go ahead and trim out that tag end. Now we're going to be working with a couple of different colors of foam and a few other materials. It, it is There is quite a bit going on in this fly to start with, but don't worry, we will take it step by step. Okay, so first thing is on top, you could see when I showed you this pattern that we had that brown foam was kind of the, the encompassing foam that went over the back of the fly. So that one's got to go in first. So in your kit, you're going to have two strips. You have brown strip, you're going to have this, this tan strip, okay? We're going to start with this tan strip or with the brown strip, sorry, here. I'm going to place this, nothing fancy. I'm not even going to really put much of a point in it, nothing. I'm just going to have a have it kind of flat. Starting it right where I started my thread, about a quarter of the way back down the hook. I'm kind of pressing it around the hook. And I'm just going to start taking thread wraps. I want to keep it centered up on top of the hook shank. And I'm going to take this real deep, okay? Back behind uh, the barb on the hook. I want this to be fairly, not in deep in the bend, but just to the edge of it. Okay, and then I'm going to bring my thread back forward. Start compressing that foam down. Now we're gonna do, do quite a bit of thread wraps in this in this uh, fly as we're using our thread as actually a color in the underbody. So I'm happy with that. I've got that one completely tacked down. I'm gonna come back up here. Now I'm gonna go in with my tan foam. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tack this one down, starting right in the same place. Same thing. I kind of like to go with like some medium tension wraps the first time I go and when I start working my way back through then I go with a little bit heavier ones. I'm going to take this one just up to butt against that foam and then start taking some thread wraps forward. And as I come kind of back and forth I really want to just work that foam down but at the same time now I'm creating the underbody and color of the fly. So once I got that all kind of compressed and it looks fairly even in diameter now I want to go in and just start laying nice thread wraps everywhere, covering up all that foam. If I notice that my thread is very corded up, so very, very thin, we'll say, you can spin it in the opposite direction, check it, let it flatten out a bit. If your thread comes a little flatter, then you're able to cover more of the foam at a time. So I'm just going to take a second here to work it back and forth, cover up all of that foam. You are, it's a little bit uh, dicey when you're getting deep in that bend, kind of working around that hook point because it has a tendency of wanting to grab your grab your thread. Okay, looking pretty decent now. Big thing here, I can't see the side towards you, but I can see my side. So tip, if you can, rotate your, your, uh, your fly so you can get a good look at it, making sure you're covering up all that foam. Now, how I like to do this fly is I am going to have to lay thread up here in the future and it makes it a little easier for me if I can do it now before I have all the foam in the way. So I like to come in here and work that little bit of an uh, edge down. I'm going to take thread wraps all the way forward to the eye and back and forth. And I'm going to 
kind of just make a little bit of a ramp up onto where I tied in that foam. It's meant to be a little thinner up at the head, but I like to create this little bit of a, a shelf for myself as I work, work through the fly. Okay, now I'm gonna take my fly or my thread back to the back end of the fly. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my underbody. If I show you on this guy here, you can see that the tan foam gets broken into four segments. Now those segments could be equal in size. They could be start smaller and get bigger. It's really a personal preference. Um, I, like to, I like to start them maybe a little smaller and just gradually grow in size, but we wanna do four segments that basically are gonna end right on top of that bump. Okay, so when you're visualizing it, you're just gonna try to visualize like kind of one, two, three, four, finish there. Okay, so my first one I'm gonna make decently small. I'm just gonna pull only that tan foam forward. I'm gonna take a thread wrap up over top, making sure it's nice and even. Pull down, I'm only gonna do four thread wraps, okay? I am pulling tight, but I don't wanna build up a whole bunch of thread on there and kind of expand the in-betweens on the segmentations. Then I'm gonna lift it up, bring my thread forward for my next one, making it a little bit bigger. Come over top, two, three, four, lift again. This one's gonna be a little bigger. Back over top, bring it down. That's one, two, three, four. Pull it up, and now for my last one to end right on the hump. Over the top, two, three, four. Now you should be left with this. If you look on the underside, you can see how that really makes a nice segmentation, and you can see it just kind of coming around the edges of the hook shank itself, okay? Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my brown foam. I wanna keep it nice and even, perfectly even on top. Take a thread wrap over top of this guy here, right here. We're gonna add quite a bit more thread wraps at this point. So I'm gonna just do my four again to secure that down. Now take a quick check. You should be able to see that brown foam just outside the tan foam, giving it a really, really nice appearance at this point. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our underwing in. So for this, okay, we've got some parapost material in white. Just clip off yourself about an inch and a half piece. I'm gonna tie it in at the halfway kind of mark in the, in the piece that I cut off. I'll center it a little bit, take a couple more thread wraps. I don't have to worry about it, the fact that it wants to lean forward because I'm gonna fix that with another piece of foam here in just a moment, okay? so. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and grab another little chunk of that tan foam that I had. I'm gonna cut myself a piece that's maybe roughly an inch long, nothing too crazy. And now this piece of foam, I'm gonna lay right on top here. I'm gonna extend it back to about that second bump on the underside, okay, second bump. And I'm gonna tie that in. Tie that down, couple more wraps. And now you can see that that underwing is gonna lay back because of that piece of foam. I'm gonna bring my scissors in and I'm gonna lay it on the back end of the fly, right on the butt. Use that as my gauge and snip off that underwing, okay? So that's how long I want it out the back. Now I'm gonna go to my first set of legs. You've got lots of legs in your kit. This one I've left in two, two pieces uh, together. Makes this, a little, this next part a little easier. Then I'm gonna double them over so that I can cut them right perfectly in half like so, I'll snip it. So I'm left with two pieces, about yay long, okay? Then there's two rubber legs in there. Now, nearer to one side, I need to come in here and just do an overhand knot. So I'll, real quick, little overhand knot, pull through, and pull it tight. Okay, so I'm left with that. That is gonna be the knuckle, or the knee, we'll say, in the back on this back leg that we're tying on the hopper, okay? Now I'm gonna repeat that with the other side. I'm gonna do that again, tie another, just single overhand knot. We just want it to be a little closer to the back end. The back legs aren't super long and we tie the knuckle in a little further back. Okay, so I'll tie in the first one so you can see it. I want the leg to point down, not out to the side, not up like that. I wanna to try to ha keep that angle so it's pointed down. Now I want that knuckle to be just about to the back of the fly, but not quite that far back. I'm gonna put a finger against there, take a thread wrap to secure it, a second one, 
And if I need to adjust it a bit, I can. This makes a double leg in the front that we will trim to length later. Now I'm gonna come up here, do the same thing with this other side. Make sure that your the knees or the knuckles are at the same place. Another couple of thread wraps to secure that one. Like so. So this is what I should be left with at the moment. Got both of those back legs in. Make sure they're kind of even. They're not moving around on you. Take maybe one more wrap. Okay, now this uh, particular Fat Albert, we're gonna add the high vis, we'll call it, portion of the fly. So we want this to be a little bit more visible, a little bit easier for, for people to see on the water. So now I'm gonna go grab some of that green pair of posts that I have in there. I'm gonna do the same thing, trim off about an inch. And this one doesn't have to hang so far out the back. But I like to basically just cord it up so I spin it, get all the materials together. I'm gonna just guess a guess a length at the back's not super critical at the moment. I'm gonna tie that in right there. One wrap, two wrap, three wrap. Now this one I do need to make sure is gonna go backwards. That front portion, I need to make sure that it's gonna fold backwards. Now, little trick to being able to do this is this. If I take this piece, I fold it over, but I make a little bubble. So you see how I've made a little, a little hump or a little loop there? If I put my thread back over top of that loop, like so, secure it down, it sends all the fiber rearward, okay? Which is perfect, that's what we want it to do. Okay, a couple more wraps there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna trim out this high vis portion. I'm gonna do it just a little shorter than the white under wing. It should stand up a little higher and that should be what you see on top of the water. Now you can change the color up. It could be green, orange, pink, um, whatever your, your eyes like to see better, okay? Okay, this is the busiest portion. We're almost there, guys. Now we're gonna lift up all the foam. We're gonna take our thread forward, take a few more thread wraps, to just behind the eye. Now I'm gonna lay all three pieces of foam down together. Get a nice, perfectly straight over the top wrap. Do a second. And I'm gonna pull that down and tighten it. Now just do a few more wraps in succession, each one tightening a little more. Okay. And this is what we should be left with so far. We've basically built now the head of the fly with the foam. We'll take a couple more thread wraps, add some legs, do a little trimming, and we'll be done. At this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim all this extra off the front. I'm gonna leave it long so I can trim it to size, but just so I don't have too much up at the head at, the, at, at this moment. Now, go back to your legs, and the length of legs we have for you guys is like so. I'm just gonna double this over. Just one this time, not two. I'm gonna trim it. And these two are gonna tie in for the front legs. There's only one front leg on either side. So I'm gonna lay it right on, on the top. I'm gonna take one wrap, two wraps, let the weight of the bobbin hang down, and then I can go ahead and grab these legs and pull them to their perspective sides. Now, I like to keep them centered right about on that middle piece of foam. I don't wanna pull them down too far or up here too high. It's a, it's a great spot for them to be just kind of right there in the middle. Make sure both sides are like that. Now we're gonna add a few more wraps just to really secure this in. Good pinch, make sure those aren't going anywhere. And now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna trim the top piece of foam. So the top piece is not gonna extend out in front of the eye. So I'm gonna cut it off pretty close to those thread wraps and just square it off, okay? And get rid of that one. And now these two here are gonna get left a little bit long out in front of the eye. So I can feel the eye with my scissors. I'm gonna come out probably about a quarter of the overall length of the hook shank, so it looks like that. Okay, right now it looks kind of squared off. You can see on the underside how that extends beyond the eye. We're gonna leave it like that just for a moment because I'm gonna half hitch or whip finish this fly. I find the half hitch a little easier on this one because we're having to work underneath that foam. So what, what that means is I'm gonna take my half hitch tool, do one wrap, two wraps, find the eye of the fly, put that on it, slide my thread off. That's a good double knot. We're gonna do it one more time. We're gonna put some resin on here, so I'm not super concerned about that. I'll come in, trim my thread out. And now all I have to do is some trimming. So first thing I'm gonna do is trim my head. So what I wanna do with the head is I actually wanna just trim it off. Just to get that square off, we're basically taking the corners. So it gives it more of a shaped head, like so. Okay, 
Now, legs are gonna be trimmed to a length that you're comfortable with, and I can't tell you what that's gonna be. Um, everybody has a kind of a preference on the legs. I'll show you how I cut mine. It's kind of an eyeball thing, but I like them all to be pretty even. And similar length, hopefully, on both sides of the fly, like so. Okay, and then for the back legs, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna trim these down just a smidge, but first, I need to separate those two pieces in the back. Okay, separate them because I had them tied together. And on the top side, I'm gonna cut out the top one, like so. So now I have a, a difference in uh, legs. You basically have a hopper as a thick, thick um, top portion of the leg and it thins out. So we're gonna cut off that top one. So past the knee, we just have one leg, like so. I actually don't mind the length of those. I'm gonna take just a smidge off of those. So they're even as well, like that. A little more off this guy. Then I'm gonna flip it upside down. You can see that that underbody looks really great. It looks segmented, really nice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with some resin. I'm gonna use just a little bit of Solares Bone Dry and I'm just gonna touch a few spots. I like to touch where the legs are, okay? So anywhere I've tied in the legs is where I'm gonna focus the attention. Gonna put a couple of spots on there. I'm gonna cure it with my UV resin. Could use some solar, or sorry, some uh, like Sally Hansen's. Um, works really good here too, whatever you want. I prefer this bones dry as I can just cure it in a big hurry. And there you have it guys, that is the Fat Albert. Great hopper pattern to have in the box, tied in all different sizes and colors. Purple's a great option, pink's a great option. Um, yeah, great, great bug to keep in the box. Lots of fun to work with that foam. Hopefully you guys are able to keep up and uh, yeah, turned out with a good fly. All right, again, it's been Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bowler Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. We want to thank Rocky Mountain Fly Shop one more time for sponsoring this quick tie. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a comment so that we know we are here. All right, guys, have a great week. We'll see you later.